The U.S. hydrogen industry will never be the same. The U.S. government and the Department of Energy has just announced a record $1 billion plan to subsidize the development of demand-side initiatives for green hydrogen. This comes only weeks after we learned a global roadmap having been released by the government itself dictating how they want to bring down the cost of clean hydrogen to $1 per kilogram by 2030 and spur the economic machine that is the hydrogen industry. And well, folks, it's pretty clear that following the Inflation Reduction Act, a lot of these promises are starting to materialize at a very good level. As I'm sure we're all familiar, clean hydrogen has taken quite a long time to commercialize and reach the scale that many industries and corporations needed to. We're facing bottlenecks with infrastructure, storage, and most importantly, demand size issues, where simply there is no retail demand for fuels like hydrogen. Zero emissions technologies like hydrogen will play a key role in the decarbonization race, but just like the lithium ion revolution of the 2010s, it's going to take a lot of effort from corporations, the public sector, and the private sector to work together to introduce the right policies. And well, folks, from the recent moves we're seeing from the government, it seems like those policies are finally starting to materialize. As we all know, hydrogen has been struggling to gain mainstream attention, primarily because of high cost. And that is particularly for green hydrogen, which is made from PEM or alkaline electrolysis using renewable energy. Fossil fuel based hydrogen is already used in hundreds of industries across the earth, and it is a key contributor to some of the biggest and most growing industries like steel production, ammonia, and glass manufacturing. However, with the advancements of fuel cell technology, which can essentially convert hydrogen fuel into electricity with near zero emissions and zero moving parts, has taken off over the past decade and introduced the world of a new way of using this hydrogen fuel that has already acted as a feedstock for so many different industries. And that happens to be renewable hydrogen. Also called green hydrogen is a fantastic way to store renewable energy at very large scale. As we all know, batteries are limited inherently to storing energy anywhere from six to eight hours with them not being able to discharge energy anywhere more than 12 hours. This means for multi-week, multi-day, and seasonal storage, you need other forms of more industrial storage, whether that be pumped hydro or compressed air. And as we already know, those technologies tend to be quite expensive and difficult to scale up, not to mention the carbon emissions associated with them. This means using a fuel cell and an electrolyzer in an energy storage medium like hydrogen can be a fantastic way to capture all this excess renewable energy without having to deal with combustion, gasoline, or other harmful emission gases. In a nutshell, this essentially means hydrogen can replace fuels like gasoline, diesel, and crude oil, all while being a completely renewable technology. And this right here is why the government and so many engineers are emphasizing the usage and scale of this technology today, which can hopefully reduce the cost, improve scalability, and skyrocket adoption. And although the private sector has done a lot to improve the efficiency and the practicality of fuel cells and electrolyzers, there is still a big gap to be bridged from the demand side to the production side. Because although there are a ton of incentives and production tax credits in North America for say, to produce clean hydrogen for different companies, it is simply not profitable to sell this fuel if there is nobody on the other side to buy it. At the end of the day, companies need a consistent revenue stream. They need contracts and they need businesses that can buy their fuel at the right price or through long-term negotiations. And right now, because of the nascence of the hydrogen industry, not only on a retail level, but also for green hydrogen on a wholesale level, you're going to need more demand side pushes. And that is exactly what the US government is now planning to do. And in my opinion, this could be the stepping stone we need for wide scale fuel adoption. And as for how exactly will the government achieve these goals? Well, primarily through three main channels. 
One of them being something called contracts for difference, which is essentially the government subsidizing the difference between the cost of producing clean hydrogen versus what consumers are actually willing to pay for it. And the second pillar is going to be the creation of a market maker entity to smoothen the process of transactions between suppliers and those demanding hydrogen fuel. Just like in the stock market, we have market makers that facilitate the transactions between share buyers and share sellers. A similar entity can be created and funded by the US government for the hydrogen market. Not only will this ensure stability for investors and creditors who want to invest in hydrogen related companies, but it also allows suppliers to get an immediate demand for the fuel they produce, helping them to scale and end up reducing the cost of the molecule. And then finally, the third channel that the government is going to be using is simple project applications where the government will fund and write a check to businesses that are providing off take agreements for key suppliers. And the really important thing here is going to be that these off take agreements are going to be near these hydrogen hubs that are built by the H2 hubs program, also funded by the DOE. And for those wondering what exactly an H2 hub will be, well, this is a mock up of what one facility could look like in Illinois. This is the government's and many private sectors is example of what the clean hydrogen economy could look like where you are importing fuel, producing fuel on site, and using the fuel for different industries that are very hard to decarbonize, like ammonia production, methanol, and steel plants. And at the same time, if you need electricity on demand for the grid, you can produce energy from that hydrogen that you produced through a fuel cell and help support the baseload renewable energy generation that is so hard to achieve with batteries and solar and wind alone. Just like the fossil fuel industry relies on oil refineries and crude oil distributors, the hydrogen industry is going to rely on H2 hubs and distributors for the technology to scale. And the government has already laid out a plan to invest in certain businesses and companies that can help out with this coalition. And as it turns out, one of those companies happens to be Nikola Motors, which is probably going to be one of the biggest demand creators with fuel cell trucks. They actually just snagged a $42 million funding grant from the Californian government to build six hydrogen stations within the Southern California corridor. This right here is really a perfect example of how government and private sectors will come together to catalyze the hydrogen industry. You need to start with a small proof of concept and then move into other parts of the nation. And this proof of concept is undoubtedly going to be right now in California. It's going to take around $85 million of capital to build these six stations, but building them will create an instant offtake demand for those H2 UBS that the US government is planning to invest in. And as Nikola launches their fuel cell truck to customers and LOI holders in July and August of this year, that demand will instantly get transferred over to fleet owners which automatically will get the ball rolling for the overall supply chain. And this paired with the fact that the US government has already just last month invested in its largest ever green H2 project in Utah worth more than $500 million could certainly put the US on the map to make the cheapest green hydrogen over the next decade globally. And as I'm sure we've seen through the Ukraine war, that will help with independence at a scale we have never seen before. As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comments section below. Do you think demand pull policies like the government is planning to do with hydrogen will help scale the technology or whether or not we need real incentives directly to the private sector and production initiatives? As usual, folks, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.